divisions wise um so right now i would say of the three of these the most powerful is armored uh the main reason for this is that you if you're playing as a commander around late game and getting um uh, m33s on the field or mlrs you have so much more power when you get to that late game and you deploy those units and you've got the additional turrets on your tanks um you just have a lot more influence through sheer virtue of the amount of power um, they represent. So going over to those units. Um, M33 Battle Tank. Uh, so basic is just this. This is what every faction gets in their tier 3, what every division for GSF gets in their tier 3 reinforcements. Um, and it's a solid AT option. It, it's got a very powerful main gun on it. Um, like to compare that to the Hellspawn so you're doing 1500 anti-armor damage with this uh, the Hellspawn meanwhile is doing 600 e e nah. um, so the M33 is a vastly more powerful tank um, when you put it in the armored division you are then also getting access to all these upgrades the machine gun is a freebie for armored division the missile launcher is then an upgrade, and so is the anti-projectile system. Um, now, these two are massive, massive bonuses. This missile launcher will strip the entire sort of shield off an officer in one shot, and it fires in bursts. Um, if you hit with both rockets off this, it will just kill an officer. Um, and this will give you protection from the G12, from single projectiles, so that includes from, say... Um, an Omicron, or, or any single shot target, you, it will just shoot it down and deny that, that attack. Um, fortunately, mazes will counter that, but again, it, it's you're forcing the enemy into very specific counters um, to what is a very generalist vehicle. You've got to keep in mind, so the main gun is going to absolutely deck um, enemy armor. Then you've got a machine gun turret on it. Then you've got a missile launch turret, which is doing sort of explosive damage, threatening multiple different kinds of targets. And then you've got a defense system. It, you are stacking so much. And that's before you even add re reactive armor, um, which adds a set of plates which will absorb a single hit. Um, that, that all adds up and makes it a very powerful, very oppressive presence. Um, and then the other aspect is the uh, MRS, which is a, a sort of arcing barrage missile attack about burst damage um and does complement the m33 very well and two of these can really dominate an area um put a lot of pressure on um being able to either do a large circular aoe sort of um, bombardment or line a um, line bombardments um if they want to be a bit more accurate um it can also be upgraded with emp which is uh not widely available for gsf um so yeah, Armored has a lot of late game power and it shows. Um, you then have fortification. And as we saw, the, the Hellspawn really gives up a lot of raw anti-tank power on its uh, main cannon for the sake of having a flamethrower. And that flamethrower can currently be quite unreliable. Um, it will absolutely decimate Iron Guards, but um, it, it can be very unreliable um and due to the lack of any smaller turrets to target uh enemies coming in behind or to the sides it's uh easily overwhelmed and flanked um which can make it quite awkward um that said you do get the fortification bonus which is giving you that extra structure health which is great um the anti-armor missile defense unless that ends up being made a automatic attack on the uh, point defense i don't really think it's worth it it's a lot of effort going to a uh a point defense turret to fire a missile um echelon air countermeasure generally underused but that will shoot down emp repair drones forging drones um it, it can be very powerful um but again it's there's some weird issues with it currently not stopping emp properly within its within its aoe um or area of effect and um it's very specific role to be filling which in the meantime, you could be running it as a mortar platform or running it as a, a point defense to, to stop enemy projectiles. Um, weapon support crews uh, automatically replenish for free. Now, uh, this has a lot of potential. 
um, as you can run phalanx crews basically as shotgun squads um, and then replenish them. Um, however, it is also very easy for them all to die and um, that, that's an expensive way of um, spending you know, resources for a point-blank assault squad. Um, defensive countermeasure um, puts down a, a... Imagine it as like a gap generator from Red Alert where it puts down shroud in an area, denies vision. Um, doesn't prevent orders being given, it's just preventing vision. Uh, so you can't accurately target something within that area. The idea of putting a communication center in the middle of the map for that is um, not worth it. Uh, Mind Drop, however, is great. Um, it can be dropped on structures, can be dropped on roads to deal with vehicles. It, it's a good, versatile uh, drop and uh, can allow you to defend flanks. Um, again, fortification is good, but the health spawn at the moment is quite weak and it's clashing with the IFV, which they're both trying to be um, anti-Iron Guard units. It's just the Hellspawn has more health, armor, and um, is better at fighting tanks than the IFV is, um, which is why I kind of feel like the IFV is a bit redundant. Um, moving on to infantry. Infantry is in a pretty rough place at the moment. It's got a solid early and mid-game plan, but it falls off heavily in the late game. Um, its vehicle options are lightly armored, um, so they've not got a properly armored unit to spearhead attacks. Um, both of these can be taken out quite easily with um, Iron Guard spam. Um, the Lancer is a good long-range support platform for AT roll, but again, it's it's very lightly skinned and they will go down rapidly. And the problem is that you can't just leave that off on a flank and then expect it to be there when you come back. It, it can be killed off very quickly. Um, the APC has a very powerful synergy with Marines, allowing them to equip Satams. Uh, so essentially you assign them to the APC like you would do to assign uh, infantry to an officer. They will then get Satams once the uh, upgrade's been unlocked. And so you've got a squad of rocket launchers running all over the place. And as long as you keep the APC alive, you just replace the Marines as and when needed. Um, expanded uh, crew equipment... Uh, the issue with that is that the um, grenade launcher for the Phalanx crew costs munitions, and you've got a lot of things to be spending munitions on for GSF. Um, that can get a bit uh, pricey very quickly. Marine combat armor, uh, I feel like that should be a passive. Um, it's not very um, noticeable. Uh, the amount of damage that units do means that a 15% bullet damage reduction is, is not terribly effective. Um, it doesn't change many engagements at all. Um, it is just it, it, it practically means that you you're just taking an extra bullet or two to kill a marine for an officer um, I mean it's nice but investing in unlocking that at tier 3 is, is not worth it uh, the infantry weapon package is nice it increased the accuracy rate of fire and uh, magazine size for marines uh, it does make them more deadly but by the time it comes out, you're really dealing with a lot of Iron Guard presence um, and having Marines with slightly better weapons doesn't really change that engagement. They are still going to trade poorly with them. Um, and then the core of what makes the infantry division of any value whatsoever is the QRF drop. This allows you to get early access to elite Marines, um, gives you a lot of options for attacking the enemies back lines or giving yourself a slightly stronger front line by deploying these at base and then getting them to an officer or where they're needed um again getting access to elite marines with atr one with an atr one with an lmg and one with a grenade launcher uh, gives you a lot more flexibility in the early game and you just need a supply yard for that um so it's it, whereas the uh, robotics you want to get a research module down as soon as possible so that you can get those those four iron guard drops um, it's completely worth it. It's the same for the QRF, getting that supply yard so you could start putting them in the field. Um, weapon crew start with five members. Um, that seems like it should be good, but unfortunately it increased the population cost of those weapon crews as well. And the most valuable aspect is the, uh, the gun, not the crew members. Um, if this was with the um, free reinforcement off of barracks for, for Phalanx crews, would be amazing. Um, it's not, though. And so it's it's actually just an increased pop cost, um, and it's very awkward. 
But uh, as you can see here, all of this focuses on an early and mid game advantage. And in the late game, it falls off really badly. And uh, you really struggle as infantry division in the late game. Um, and it is a very real problem at the moment. Um, going on to Axron. Uh, robotics has so many advantages, it is insane. Um, support crawler is an unarmed crawler, so you don't have that APC with a set of quite nasty machine guns on it. Um, instead, you have uh, the support crawler, which um, has no weapons, but can be deployed to put down a shielded domed area, uh, which gives you a bit of safety on the front lines. And uh, it will then have ammo and health packs, similar to a mule. Um, on the sides and at the back there are free LMG and rocket launch pickups for your officers which is incredibly powerful um, you then have service iron guard who are like super engineers but for Axaron and they will repair iron guards, they will repair buildings they are very strong and very good at what they do uh, you then replace specialists who um, we, we haven't discussed specialists we probably shouldn't bother but um, they're not very good at the moment. They're, they're rather overcosted for what they bring, and they're at tier 3. Um, this replaces them with a I shoot everything and kill everything self repairing death robot. Um, they're good for dealing with vehicles, they're good for dealing with infantry. Uh, they will not trade well with Marines in large numbers, but uh, again, you have other options for dealing with them, uh, such as, you know, Iron Guards. So. Templars and Iron Guards is a, a good combo and will kill lots of things. Um, on top of that, you get Researchable Tech, Iron Guard, Improved Actuators. They move faster and they recover from stuns faster. Um, one of the biggest problems that Iron Guard have is getting stunned and you mitigate that. And then they also move faster, which is great. Um, great. Mules can capture. So uh, your mules, which are used for securing points and resupplying your officers, uh, can also be used as capture. Uh, so you can send them out, capture a point, and then immediately lock it down. Um, ubiquitous, great, um, 10 out of 10. Uh, late game, when you've got full robotics upgrades, um, mules are quite quite durable, so you can just have them rush to points and capture them, uh, which I can tell you that scouts wouldn't be able to pull off. Um, so yeah, very, very strong. Mass production, uh, produce 10 iron guard cores at your HQ. Um, they're cheap, and they're very deadly. Basically, there's um, imagine you just strip the armor off an iron guard and just make cheap um, walking LMGs, basically, and that's what they are. Um, so, and they move faster than regular iron guards because they're lighter weight. So, uh, ridiculously powerful. It's it's all offensive power. The only real problem with mass production is it's very pop um, pop ineffective. Uh, they're taking up a lot of your know, population cap for what they are. Um, but the idea is that you produce this and you just rush them straight to the front line, the idea being that you either murder lots of stuff or they die, in which case they're not taking up your pop cap anymore and you don't care. Uh, and then finally we come to that special ability Iron Guard drop, drop four Iron Guards at a target location. Um, the best way of using that is that instead of building with your fabricator, you want to get your research um, up first and then start dropping these in. And the thing is that they don't cost any power this way. It's just... Uh, your credits and munitions to be able to deploy those. You're deploying them where you want on the field. Um, it's at a discount, and it means that your fabricators can then work on uh, unlocking upgrades such as the Rook or Knight. Um, very, very strong ability, which uh, should be used liberally when playing robotics. Um, moving on to energy. Energy is really the late game focused um, division. Um, you will really be do, like working towards either the Sigma Ocular or Laser Knights. Um, however, you do have the mid-game play of running a lot of ocular defense. Um, however, every single one of those turrets that you place, they are taking away from your uh, energy income. Um, but again, ocular defense are quite powerful. They are not only good versus infantry, but uh, one of those will actually beat a uh, IFV. So considering it's available sooner and is cheaper than IFE, it um, can be quite difficult to deal with. Um, researchable techs, um, overload reactors. So the way this works is that you increase the uh, reactor's output, but then it eventually just destroys itself. 
Um, it, it's really for a tech rush build. I believe it was originally abused to do an Omicron rush build, generating just enough power to get an Omicron very early. Um, I mean, there's potential there, but it's it's using up a lot of your build time and you're, you're blowing up your own resources. Um, I would prefer this be changed to a overload reactors as a temporary thing where they increase the output temporarily and then after that they're giving reduced income. Um, probably wait it so you're getting more earlier, but then in the long run you're actually going to have less power over the course of, say, five minutes. Um, so it's got to be timed specifically to get the most out of it to, to rush something specific um, and your special ability is laser strike which is the only I think it is the only um, direct um, attack that your Axeron commanders get uh, outside of the MP strike um, so that will do a long line in the ground leaving a burn effect uh, this is best used to cut off uh, GSF approaches or retreat and um, reinforcement paths uh, basically causing them to just wander into it and die. Um, you can get some good value out of this. It's good for clearing out phalanx crews, uh, but it's not massively impactful. It is uh, typically annoying rather than uh, amazing. So, But it does last for a long time. The, uh, the attack ship that does it uh, makes three passes, so it is there for quite a long time. So, you know, it, it's, it's handy. Um and finally we have Stealth. Stealth is probably the most unique division. Um, you're losing the incredibly versatile Omicron for an Omicron Sonic, which is more focused on anti-infantry and then stunning enemy vehicles. Um, it can be very powerful. Keep in mind this could be one of these could lock down an M33 um, and allow you to then kill that M33. Um, but it really does need support, something else to actually deliver that killing killing blow um, and the Omicron Sonic itself is not terribly deadly it is only going to be dealing with uh, enemy infantry it does shoot um, like cause a blast which will go through cover um, so again it, it's a good choice and can have a lot of influence but at the same time um, it doesn't have the direct damage that the typical Omicron has uh, stealth crawler um, it's a regular crawler, but it can lock down in a stealth mode in a location and shock people. You're like, aha, there's a crawler here, you're dead. Um, haven't seen it used much, mostly due to the fact that crawlers are very squishy. They, they're very easy to kill. Um, and investing in one which, you know, goes invisible seems nice, but um, it, it's not doing anything else while it's there. Um, so, hey, it's cool. Um, Scout Jammer, uh, similar to the GSF jamming technology for the communication center, but uh, regular scouts then put them down. Um, while doing it, the scout like um, crouches down and then has to channel the effect, basically. Uh, so you can't do anything else, but, you know, it, it can, you know, reduce an enemy commander's ability to see what's going on and deal with what you're doing. Uh, more importantly is the Phantom Drone. Uh, Phantom Drone is huge. Um, basically it replaced the recon drone um, you lose the the scouting aspect of it but instead it puts down a bubble of cloaking uh, which makes your units invisible uh, the importance of this is it means that you trade very well with enemy AI units oh hey Sinistra <laughs> nice of you to join us um Allows you to get really good trades. Uh, you can have up to three of these on the battlefield. Placing these properly um, so they're awkward for your enemy to get at while still covering your army uh, can allow you to dominate locations until the enemy actually counters it using proper scans and sniping out these drones. But um, very powerful, but it is late game. You are you're putting this down in tier three. Uh, it does lead to some very uh, serious spikes in power late game. Um, and then finally we go on to the special abilities, Mind Drops, same as GSF Mind Drop, uh, put these in the location, good for dealing with uh, enemy tanks, can be used to destroy buildings, um, good solid call in, um, and really does, does need to be dealt with by players most of the time, you would typically otherwise get value out of them. And finally Phantom Assault which spawns an army of holographic scouts who will distract the enemy AI units for the duration of their uh, time on the field. 
which can really allow you to uh, get some strong pushes on locations while they're busy firing at invisible enemy scouts. Um, good way of overwhelming defenses or, or making it very difficult for the enemy to, to deal with an offensive you're just about to launch. Um, so yes, that's the divisions. Uh, on the Axeron side, I feel like robotics is the strongest one simply because it brings so many tools to the table. Um, energy is probably the weakest at the moment because it's not bringing anything in the early game. There is the, the power reactors, but you're blowing up your own power reactor to do it, which um, kind of counterintuitive. Um, but again, like the Sigma Ocular can be very powerful. Uh, laser Knights can be useful, but with the buff to regular Knights now, I don't think there's uh, such a huge disparity in uh, the value of those units now. Um, and again, there's not much else going on. There's very little options, whereas robotics, you've got options for days. And stealth, you've got a lot of tricks in your bag to use. So, mm. um, Overall, yeah. GSF, Infantry Commander, not viable if the game goes into late game. Um, Axe on side, it's usually just the case the energy just doesn't really get off the ground, doesn't get the value. Although, again, when those Sigma Rockiers come out, they can be powerful. Um... But again, they can struggle if they're getting shut down. Um, for me, it's really robotics or stealth, um, with robotics being far more diverse, having a lot more options, and, and just being a very strong all-rounder that can do anything well. Um, 